Today's guest is best known for her role as Maria Sofia on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Please welcome to the Zoom, Kayla Monterosso Mejia. Hello! Hi! Hi. Hi. Good, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous about oh. all of it. good, you know? Don't be nervous, I'm so excited. On Behind the Resume, we always start off with talking about how we met, and we just yes. connected on Instagram. Yes, I had watched your videos beforehand, so I think I saw you follow me and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> yes, follow back. I love that, I love that. I love that. that. So I, I probably knew of you way before you knew anything about me. I don't know, because I definitely have heard of you in the grapevine of acting classes of how just amazing you are. Really? Oh my God. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, she seems so cool. And then oh, when Free Ridge really? was announced, I was like, oh my God, she seems so cool. Oh, oh, that, I didn't know yeah. that. That's so cool. Something that sometimes people don't know is how small the community actually is yeah. of classing and working actors and all these things. So that's really cool. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I've been a fan for a while. First of all, where are you from? I am originally from Baldwin Park. Um, it's sort of towards the Inland Empire, if you know where that is. Uh, more towards like Anaheim. It's a complete opposite oh way. Of, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that's always what I reference is Disneyland. I was like, okay. Know? In, it's it's going towards that way yeah okay, so but, um, you're from california though oh yes Cal oh i just assume <laughs> <laughs> anytime anybody asks me that question it's always someone based here in california <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> california cool cool and then how did you get into acting ah uh, there we go the first oh, there we go <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad we got it out of the way uh i got into acting I've always liked it since I was little, but not in the traditional way that most kids do where they start with theater and they grow up sort of in the arts. I liked playing pretend when oh. I was little uh -huh. more than the other kids. And uh -huh. I, I was like, they would get so irritated with me. I would take it so seriously. And I'd be, yeah. whatever we were playing was like, a, I don't know, maybe teacher or something. I was in my role. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do, and other kids were so sick of me. And uh, oh. I think that was like the first indication looking back at it now. I was like, oh, that's what that was. You enjoy that since you were little. Um, but I grew up in a neighborhood that wasn't the best and it didn't cater to sort of that career yeah. or that field of work. Um, and so as I got older, it was something that I completely forgot about. It was just something that I thought was like kids being kids and just playing pretend. This is where the timeline gets a little messy. But I moved to Chino Hills, I think maybe in junior high. Mm -hmm. And it was such a big transition in my life that I think it like sparked in me this like revolution, I guess, of feelings and this passion that I was like oh my god oh yeah I, I used to like that or that interests me that that's weird I just remembered it I think because I was going through so many emotions of moving from one neighborhood to another and leaving behind my friends and my family was going through a lot also that it just sparked something in me that I was like oh oh my god I liked acting or like this is wow. a passion that I had wow. and I started researching about it and I uh, was able to get into a performing arts high school um, that was just by some miracle 15 minutes away from where I moved to mm -hmm. and I did that for about two years but the only thing was that the performing arts high school catered to musical theater and I can't sing. <laughs> I wish it was, oh my gosh, I wish so bad. I mean, I, I definitely want to like take lessons and sing a tune, but at that time, oh, forget it. I sounded so bad. And so I, aside from the training in class, it wasn't doing thing. I, my naive brain at the time I was like oh, okay no I want to try film and tv and oh I, I cringed yeah. out like oh. but um I decided to uh, go into homeschooling 
But because the performing arts high school, I felt like at the time wasn't catering to what I needed, I decided to go into homeschooling Mm -hmm. and move to San Fernando with my aunt at the time and attend like this program for kids who were specifically in homeschooling that allowed you to take acting classes in between every homeschool class, if that makes sense. So I think it was like three or four acting classes during the day Uh of different types of subjects. It was like improv and scene study and all these things in between my uh, homeschooling classes. So you were really creative when you were little. And then at what age did you want to kind of start pursuing acting? 14, I want to say. I think it was 14 where I really was old enough, I think, to start taking actionable steps and doing yeah. research and now it it my parents also don't speak very much English or have any idea of anything that wasn't in their immediate world yeah. so yeah. this idea of becoming an actress or trying to figure out how to get started was all up to me yeah. uh, just because I, they didn't really know so I think at 14 I was old enough to sort of start searching and start figuring out a way in if that makes sense a way to start actually making things happen and my parents were also uh that was an age where they were like oh okay where I wasn't just a kid and they could like you know uh no 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 it was like okay okay well let me listen to her what were your passions like in what did you spend your time doing um up until you were 14 oh my god I was all over the place (laughs) (laughs) uh, you know what's so funny that because of my life prior to when I started doing acting is so different than who I am now. Really? And as, like, it's, I cannot explain to you when, when I was 14 or not when I turned 14, cause it wasn't like that, but I was, I remember being 14 and my life completely revolved around acting at that point. Everything that I was doing was all about acting and so it's so weird to think about a time before then I'm like what what was I doing (laughs) what was going on um I think it was just regular kid stuff hanging out with my friends and going out it wasn't anything like (laughs) too exciting I really I think in my in I don't want to necessarily say it's my culture but maybe in my family hobbies and things like like extracurricular activities didn't really exist if it wasn't for soccer like if you didn't play soccer or were like in a a recreational league and there was like really nothing else like my parents just didn't know about like theater programs or anything that that were like oh let's maybe she'll like something else let's try something else it just that that wasn't what they knew so I tried soccer it was not for me oh my gosh I too and it was not for me <laughs> I oh my god I yeah. was so bad at yeah. oh my god my poor teammates and my yeah. I brought the team down <laughs> it was so bad they were so oh, kind and they had patience with me yeah it was just normal hanging out with my friends I guess I have a little brother and we're very close and so it was like probably hanging out with him and things yeah. like that so then once you started getting into acting seriously at like 14 and started homeschooling and everything did you think I'm gonna do this for a career or it was just like a serious passion truthfully I think it was just a a passion that I had I loved it so much and I knew there wasn't really anything else I could do yeah but because I didn't see much representation I don't think I at the time now looking back unfortunately thought that it was actually possible wow and so I was just going off of this love and passion that I had for something and I guess some part of me did think that like maybe I could do this but looking back on it I don't even think I thought about the end goal or Mm -hmm. the career path of it all I think I was just so focused on learning and studying and being so wrapped up in this passion that I just didn't think about anything else I I was just if your 14 year old self could see you now what would (laughs) oh my gosh I I think about this all the time oh my gosh anytime I 
do like reach a, a milestone or a goal or there's this new experience that happens that I remember thinking about when I was younger or wishing about that comes to mind I'm like dude I never thought and I unfortunately I always say this in my mom gets on about me she's like you shouldn't say that like if you never thought this was possible then why were you doing it <laughs> but I truly didn't think this was possible for me wow I did not ever think that the things that I get to experience now were at all going to be something that I was actually going to be able to do wow and so I remember like getting my first call back <laughs> and crying yeah oh my gosh and then you know like the milestones kept getting bigger and bigger and then I had a producer session or a chemistry read and then I, I booked my first project and I was like oh my god and yeah. every step of the way I, because it happened so much after I first initially started was that correct grammar <laughs> I apologize if it wasn't <laughs> but I do remember every time that something happened thinking this is insane I, I I can't believe this just being so genuinely grateful and yeah. like this gratitude that I can't explain for like where I am now because Kayla from like you said 14 would have never ever thought that this was actually possible <laughs> I think that's so inspiring and I think it's inspiring that you weren't like auditioning since you were six because what you hear a lot, you know? And then so 14 year olds would think they're too old to start acting or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's so possible. And I actually love that you've like exceeded your own expectations so much. I think that's just beautiful. Yeah, it's funny now that I think about it because I think every time I decided to take like another step forward, I was terrified and I just, I just had the smallest amount of faith, just enough yeah, to right. like get me to take that step, but not enough to actually think I could become successful. If that makes sense. So I always was like, oh shit, I don't know. If, sorry. <laughs> As I say, I don't, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I can do this, but okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm just, I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna try, and then whatever happens is fine. Then I would move into homeschooling, and then after homeschooling, I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna try like more uh theater-based classes I'm like I don't know if it's gonna work or I don't know if, if you know if I'm just wasting my time but I'm just gonna try it let me just see what happens and then I would do that and then I, I remember being like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try a showcase like maybe nothing happens but I'm just just gonna try and and it, it always just seemed like that was a recurring theme just yeah. like, take a small leap forward and then you yeah. just something might happen. Right. I heard this recently that having courage isn't, or I don't know what the, I don't want to butcher it, but something about like <laughs> having courage isn't not being fearful. It's just not letting the fear stop you. Oh, yes. No? Yes. That, you just said it perfectly. <laughs> you, you, what I just rambled on for the last five minutes, <laughs> you just said so beautifully. <laughs> Yes, that's 100%. That's a perfect way to describe it. I just had that a small amount of courage to go, okay, mm -hmm. I'm just going to try. Yeah. And at this point, do you do you see that more as possible or you still can't believe where you are? I can't. I cannot believe it. So. <laughs> and I think even now, by... Oh my God, the grace of God, I've had just enough to where the, I think maybe like the last two and a half years, I've been able to, for the most part, go from job to job to job. Yeah. It's felt like every time, because there's always a small gap in between, right? Yeah. And I always think, I'm like, oh, dang it, am I going to, is this said, am I going to work again? Am I going to get another audition? Am I ever going to be able to do it? And so every time I, I am able to book something else, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I guess we're still here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And so it's, it's still every time is just like, okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what it feels like. Yeah. I don't think it's something that I'll ever get used to. Hopefully not, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you want to stay grounded, too. Yeah. Were there ever parts along your journey where you wanted to just give up? Yes. <laughs> so many times. Oh, my gosh. In fact, I, I think I actually did not not every ever more than like a week at a time (laughs) but there was so many times that I wanted to go up I remember specifically on big milestones Mm -hmm. when I remember because I had uh gone into homeschool I remember when my friends are graduating high school and doing you know grad night and all these things and I think at that time I was out of like a traditional school for maybe about a year and a half Mm -hmm. and so it felt like I was still in the same routine Mm -hmm. and my friends were all graduating and applying to college and doing these things and I was still stuck in the exact same thing and nothing was happening I wasn't getting anywhere I remember now later on down the line uh um I had my manager (laughs) and nothing was like I could not get one audition to save my life and my manager sent me a like a report of all the places that she had or all the casting offices she had you know sent my things to or uh sent in uh my profile to be able to audition I guess and nobody wanted anything to do with me and it must have been like three pages long yeah. and you know th- those like titles yeah, yeah. Are small. <laughs> it was so many and she was so sweet it was her way of telling me like I'm not giving up on you like yeah. I'm not I'm trying but just for some reason <laughs> no one wants to see you but I again I remember seeing that report and being oh my god dang like it was so discouraging because it was yeah. co-stars and like maybe a line here or there and it seemed like not even for really small things that people want to give me a chance again also for birthdays like uh, I remember when I was turning 18 oh my gosh I was so sad again I thought dang I'm still I'm sad because at that point I had been trying for maybe like four years Mm -hmm. oh sorry okay there you go um and again it felt like nothing was happening and again, when I turned 21, it was the same thing. Now my friends were graduating college yeah. and, you know, starting their families or, you know, doing whatever it is they were getting, doing in their life and felt like they were advancing. And I was still stuck in the same place as I had been for like the last five or six years of my life. And every time that I thought about that, I would get so discouraged. And I think something that, my I don't know if it's super common I don't know if too many actors go through this but for me even now oh man I don't know if I should say that but let me say (laughs) even now I I'm not someone who gets like 10 auditions in a month I would have or I would get 10 auditions in a year and so it felt like they were so there was just not many opportunities for me I have a very specific look and so there was just not much for me and then whatever was for me I don't think they were willing to take a chance on a newer actor who didn't have much on her resume and so anytime I I thought about things like that or anytime that again like I said I had milestones or anytime I started comparing myself to other people horrible I would immediately think dang is this worth it like I'm not getting anywhere I'm nothing is happening everything feels really impossible like what am I doing wrong or (laughs) do I need better headshots do I need different management and it just felt like nothing was happening and every time I had moments like that I always wanted to give up yeah well good thing you didn't this is so inspiring to hear I always felt like I wasn't good enough or like I'm like what's wrong with me why why not only why it wasn't even why didn't I get the job or anything I was like dang why couldn't even they let me audition like please just let let me at least get in the door I, I wasn't even allowed to audition for these things sometimes it's it's really easy to get discouraged just when you feel like nothing's happening. What was the first thing that happened that really just changed things for you? Not necessarily changed things for me in the way that people might think, but I think changed things for me 
personally was I booked a short, uh, the lead in a short film for this incredible film that I loved, but that was the first time that somebody cast me in a lead. And I was like, oh my God, like I, I can do this. Because at that point it had been silence and maybe like a small part here or there I was still doing theater the whole time theater is so much more inclusive they are so willing to take a chance on people and you know to maybe not get conventional body types or certain races and allow other things and so I was still working in theater but as far as far as film and tv I remember reading the breakdown and they were looking for what was as close to my type as possible. I remember wow. reading the description and it was a uh, Latina, like uh, looking for 14 to 14 through 18 plus size. It's like not, you know, like it, I just thought, oh my God, I, I've never seen this. On wow. breakdown, I have never ever come across something and be like, oh my God, I can do that. Yeah. It was, I was always auditioning for open to all ethnicities or, you know, whatever it was but it was just never I had never seen something that was written specifically with me in mind and I remember reading the log line and thinking I love this yeah. like I love this role I love this story and I, I, I want to audition and it was on Actors Access it was a self-submission oh and, uh, wow that's oh awful. yes <laughs> and I auditioned I sent in a tape and I I could feel it. Yeah. You ever you ever send it? You're like, yeah. oh, this feels good. I yeah, yeah. I love this. Yeah. And I remember sending in the tape and thinking, okay, well, whatever happens, happens. And sure enough, I I got a call back, and I got the role. I got the part. And the writer director, her name is Gabriela Garcia Medina. She is phenomenal in every way she informed me. she's I'm so inspired by her but I remember oh this is personal but I I want to share it because it just means so much to me and it was just such a huge propeller and like keep going don't give up I remember it was a one-day shoot and so I just had one outfit on and she gave me the t-shirt that I wore in the short film and she says, I want you to keep this because I think you're going to go far. And I want you to remember where you started and how talented you are. And I, nobody has ever talked to me that way. I think sometimes as actors, your process is kind of like your own secret. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Not necessarily secret as in that you keep it from the world, but you only know yeah. this gut feeling and this sort of goal that you're trying to yeah. attain but nobody else really sees because nobody's in your day-to-day life and yeah. you know you don't meet people very often and so it felt like she for the first time not only saw me but saw more for myself than I did oh and also being the lead and and oh. that was also the first time that I dipped my toes into comedy oh wow cool. <laughs> yeah I remember that gave me enough motivation to last me like until the next burnout and that <laughs> was, was a self-submit you got that for yourself yes yeah. I remember when my steam ran out from that there was again another breakdown that I saw and oh no it wasn't uh it wasn't a breakdown it was on Instagram mm-hmm. I saw this I think it's Latino filmmakers network and it's an Instagram and they post breakdowns sometimes for like non-union films and things like that this is an insane story <laughs> Uh, because this gave me so much more than I would have ever thought but it was this breakdown and it it was for like this really incredible story about like a an undocumented uh kid and, and it was about like DACA and everything and again I saw a breakdown and it didn't necessarily say that we're looking for my body type because I think that's a big factor. It's just realistically, it's something that I have to think about is like, okay, well, I have to go into things th- knowing or at least being aware that I don't want to say that. <laughs> I don't want to say that I have to be aware because it just makes it sound like I can't get something. But I think sometimes because of me, not because of anyone else, 
I always have in the back of my mind that my body type is not what you see in Hollywood. And so I always feel, or I at least felt before that, oh, they're not, they're not going to, they're not going to want me. They're not looking for me. They're looking for like this beautiful version of what they want as a Latina, right? (laughs) They're not really looking for, I have a normal face. I'm like five, two. Oh, don't put yourself down. No, like I love myself, right? But (laughs) I have like a a very normal look. Like I'm, you know, I don't got crazy cheekbones. You know, I just look very normal. And so sometimes when they want to cast a Latina, they want her to be like very thin and beautiful and all these things. And I just wasn't it. But I remember seeing this breakdown and loving the character so much. I, I was like, I want... I won audition for this. And at the time, it was just a short film, uh, a student short film for USC. I saw the breakdown and it was like, send your your things to this email, right? And I sent my stuff. I didn't hear back. And then I was like, I, I think a couple days had passed and I went on Actors Access and I saw the breakdown again for the same character. And I was like, oh, shoot. They like didn't want to see me. That sucks. But I was like... I was feeling courageous. I was like, you know, I'm just gonna, I send it through email, but let me send my stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. So I sent it in again, didn't hear anything back. And then I saw the breakdown a third time. (laughs) I guess they were still looking. And you know what? I said, okay, this is the last time. I'm going to send in my things one more time. And you know what? I'll let it go. And sure enough, I submitted my materials again the third time and I got an audition. I sent in the tape. I think from, because it was also at the time, remember, it was a short film, student film. So it wasn't like they were doing crazy extensive, like casting process was that. And so I remember getting the, the, the role mm-hmm. and I, and it ended up being so much more than that. So it was a, a three, a group of three best friends the other actors who I was working with were series regulars on other shows. Yeah. And yeah. it made me feel like I could be on their level. Yeah. And we ended up working on the, was it Warner Brother Law? I think. Um, wow. Yes. I was like, what <laughs> is this? And somehow, um, and it's this incredible, again, writer, director, uh, Sean Smith, she's, incredible but it was her beautiful story and it did so much for me because I remember I was like what the heck yeah how did I get here (laughs) I thought this was just a student film like very and here I am and because I just genuinely love the character so much I didn't give up on it but it ended up doing festival rounds and now it's like it plays on JetBlue Airlines amazing yeah I was like what's it called um with Tina hashtag with Tina okay I'll look for it. Yeah, it's in, that it's is insane. So incredible. Oh my god! And I forgot to mention yeah. this short film that I did. That again was just like a one day shoot with Gabriela Garcia Medina. That got sold to HBO Max, and so now you can watch it on HBO what? Max. Isn't that, that crazy? Is... Do you realize From how self- inspiring your story is? <laughs> you are like the definition of <laughs> showing up for yourself and not giving up. And I think it's beautiful that these were scary steps, but like you literally got yourself an audition and then you booked the lead and now it's on HBO Max and your other film, like it's so incredible. I, I doesn't, I, I'm like, what the heck? And yeah. all these things just seemed to like, I was like this, I can't believe this opportunity yeah. turned into yeah. what it, it is now. And yeah. like yeah. these people that I worked with are also some people in this industry that I, love so much and are that I'm so close to now and have been like such an incredible guiding light and I just can't imagine or I I never thought I genuinely never thought that those opportunities that I just saw as like something because I loved the character were gonna be so rewarding and I was gonna have these incredible opportunities and it's like what this was just this was just a short film this was just a student film and now I'm I was like, it, it's just insane. I, <laughs> I don't even know how else to say it. <laughs> that is incredible. So when did uh, Curb come along? Oh my gosh. <gasps> Curb came along pandemic time. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was the, cr- I think the, one of the craziest years of my life. 2020? Uh, I, yes. Was it 2020? Uh, 
I just remember it was the first year of the pandemic. Like we we shut down in March, and by the end of the year, I had booked it. But mm-hmm. what's I <laughs> that's not even <laughs> the half of it was I actually got an audition for this role on a Disney short film, okay. and it didn't say much. But I remember in let me let me go back because I think this is important because I was just like 2019 then I guess because if 2020 was it I'm sorry all the years are no. fuzzy now yeah yeah but 2019 was towards the end of it in the middle of the second half I had done both of those short films mm-hmm. and so I was coming into 2020 feeling great like thinking I finally like I oh my gosh I I I'm um, maybe I can do this like that's what it felt like I was like you have oh an agent at that point I did I did I think I had an agent and a manager I was very lucky I did a I did a showcase and I found a manager and she helped me find an agent and we were working together I remember then coming into pilot season and thinking oh yes uh-huh. let's go yeah. <laughs> and January February nothing mm-hmm. I got nothing oh my gosh it was so discouraging because it at that time like there was talks of a pandemic or like this virus going along but nothing was really shut down until yeah. like the beginning of March yeah. and so January February is still pretty active and there's still pilots being cast and everything and not getting a single audition I felt so bad and then the pandemic like literally a month later the pandemic happened Mm-hmm. and all these things and I was like dang and I think around the summertime I got an audition for a short film called Growing Things that Disney Plus was producing I remember loving the role and thinking oh my god this is so cool but I still had this stigma in my head and maybe my own limitations that Disney didn't hire just to be honest that they didn't hire fat people I was like oh no they don't want to like I, I love the role, but I remember at the same time being so discouraged thinking I've, I've like, I've, I haven't seen anybody on Disney that looks at all even like similar to me. Cause at the time, Liv and Maddie came after and we'll get into her cause Jessica Maria Garcia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God. Love. Oh, she did so much for me. I oh, obsessed God. with her. But I, I hadn't watched Liv and Maddie yeah. at the time because I know she was on that. And, 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 she, and now you get to be that for other girls. Which is <laughs> insane to think. Oh, my God. I wanna, oh, God. <laughs> but I remember thinking to myself at the time, oh, my God. Like, oh, I love this. But dang, Disney, they don't hire people who look like me. And I, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to do it anyways. I, I, I got an audition. I love the role. And I sent it in. And because it was still pandemic time, I remember, you know, when sometimes they show you the audition deadline or like yeah. when they had moved on, they sometimes tell you the start date of the project yeah. or like callbacks. And so I would do the audition and then the initial start date had already passed. So I was like, oh, oh. dang it. Like, okay, I didn't get it right. Cause I just moved on. Cause I, I could see there when it started. Yeah. And so then I thought, oh, whatever. And then, like a month later, after I had forgotten about it already, yeah. I got an, or, uh, I got a callback, and I was like, uh? "Oh no, it was it was a retake. Sorry, it wasn't a callback. It was a retake. They liked my read, but they wanted to see something different, but not quite ready to like move me to the next next yeah. step." And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I was like, "Okay." Yeah. I was like, "Oh," and I, I again, I got a coach and I trained. And I was like, "Okay, let's let's do this and all this," and I did it again. Like a month passed. I was like. Oh, Damn. Oh my Whatever. god. Because again, it was pandemic time, so deadlines and things kept moving. We didn't know. Yeah. And so then I got the I think it was a callback. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> what? Yeah. Because every time it felt like I had forgotten about the project. Mm-hmm. And then I think I got a producer session with a director and, and a casting director. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then towards this is where I blank. I'm so bad with uh dates and times but I ended up booking that project Mm -hmm. the week prior to that was when I got 
the Curb Your Enthusiasm audition. Oh, and so gosh. I didn't think anything of it. I, I am to this day probably so terrified of improv. My brain works slower. Just <laughs> naturally, it just even with lines, I have to be really prepared before beforehand because I'm not someone who like picks up things quickly. I think now the more I practice, I'm like, okay, I'm getting the hang of it. But yeah. in general, it still takes me way longer than most people to learn lines and huh. you know, so <laughs> my brain is I was like, improv, that sounds like my worst nightmare. Wow. <laughs> because I can't come up with things on the spot. I just didn't think or I think the way that I was approaching at the time wasn't uh, a good way. And I, I was like, I, I can't, like, I'll send it in because it's an audition. And I remember, obviously, when I get an audition, I will search up the casting director, the director, the yeah. project, the, everything. Yeah. And I remember seeing Allison Jones and going to IMDb Pro, I'm like, let me go see. And I'm like, oh, my God, she's a huge caster. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I might not be good, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do my yeah. damn best, like. And it wasn't, and at the time also, it just said co-star, like one line or two lines, couple scenes, like it wasn't anything crazy. And I sent in an audition and then I, I was just like, I, truthfully, I was so terrified that I didn't even necessarily want the job. I just wanted to make a good impression on the casting director because it was so scared like you just knew that at the time it wasn't a skill set that I had wow and it, it wasn't anything that I, I was like okay you know I'm fine if this one doesn't come back to me yeah. I was like it's okay um oh gosh but I got the audition and then like a couple days later I got a producer session and I was gonna read on tape with Larry David mm-hmm. and I was like oh my god wow. when I tell you it was like the best worst feeling of my life yeah 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 yeah. it was like this whole thing but long story short I ended up auditioning with Larry David I got the role and in the same week I got the Disney short film and then I got a role for Carby and the I'm so bad and I think they were doing that for like privacy reasons and to keep the integrity of the show or the the storyline secret but then when I got on the phone and my manager managers were like, congrats, you got the role. They were like, Aww. and the episodes, I was like, what? Oh and God. so I live, I live in the back house, right? And so my aunt, she lives in the front house. Mm-hmm. And after I told my mom and everyone, I was like crying and crying. And then I ran out to go tell my aunt. I couldn't even make it to her house. Oh. <laughs> I like yeah. fell to the ground. And I started sobbing. Yeah. Time, it would, I, what it had maybe been like, five or six years yeah. of like four projects that I had booked in the yeah. set of that time. Yeah, yeah. And so it just meant so much to me. And I was living in this crazy world of like having booked two projects in one week that were more than I ever thought. And I, I it just, I couldn't believe it. And they, when I tell you, I have, please keep this in. <laughs> I owe them so much. They, took a chance on me in every sense of the word. I had nothing on my resume but short films, student films, non-union films, and theater. I had never, because I booked Disney and Curb in the same week, when they submitted my resume to the casting director, Allison Jones and Ben Harris, and, and they had like nothing there was nothing of any substance or any sort of indication that let them felt like I was going to be a professional or that I knew what I was doing they 100% took a chance on me I owe them so much and so in terms of when I say what a project did for me personally it was the 90 day plan but career wise curb your enthusiasm did more for me than I ever thought and I owe everyone down to the directors and the producers everyone so much I owe them everything they will never be enough words to like express how grateful I am for what they did for me because there's just nothing else the amount of opportunities that I was able to get I literally am speechless like I have no words to be able to describe and thank them enough for what they did for me because and I also I think this is a good lesson that 
what's for you is for you and it will not pass you by because even though I didn't have like I, I didn't have crazy great reps like you know I had what I could get at the time and these incredible women who took a chance on me but none of us had like this incredible reputation or like you know we weren't (laughs) doing crazy things Mm -hmm. and I had nothing on my resume it was just like a regular breakdown on actors access my agent submitted me and what's for you is for you and it's not going to pass you by it didn't matter that I didn't have the credits on my resume or like the best representation this opportunity of other girls got was just for me and what's for you is for you and it's not going to pass you by no matter how unprepared you are or how prepared you are like what's meant for you is going to find you wherever you are with whatever representation you have and whatever corner of the world you're you're in now you're with one of the biggest agencies in the industry oh my gosh (laughs) i can't believe it Congratulations. So they found you Thank on the you. And like, let's go. Yeah. Oh my God. And it, it's so interesting. I remember <laughs> I got so lucky. I was so grateful, but I had taken other meetings with other agencies at the time and I was waiting for something to click. Yeah. And I kept like, you know, uh, I, this is just a side note. I, I'm not necessarily very religious, but I'm very spiritual. And it's like, I believe in the God that, that I know and that I talk to. And my mom has like tried to teach me to say my higher power to be like inclusive. Of everyone. But I remember always going back to my higher power and saying, like, let me hear you. Like, please, like, just have very clearly who you want for me because it yeah. felt like everything was happening so quickly. Yeah. Um, that I was taking these meetings and I just was like, oh, dang it, I don't know, I don't know. And I remember taking the meeting with UTA and halfway through the meeting, I started crying. Oh, because <laughs> I felt it. I was like, oh, this is yeah. and the way that they spoke to me and the way that they saw my career and my future was exactly what I saw for myself. Oh, but it was wow. also this very surreal moment of I cannot believe this. It was a moment where I think I was able to take everything in and really see what I was doing. I was like, I can't believe this is my life. I can't believe I'm having this meeting with these incredible people who see what I see for myself and more. Yeah, right. And I just cry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm a crier. I'm a huge <laughs> crier. No, it's beautiful. So how has your journey been with them so far? Oh, they, they're incredible. They are absolutely incredible. They are just so encouraging and they're very understanding. I think for me, I'm someone who is not right now. I need to get better, but I'm not very good at multitasking. And when I dedicate my time to something, this is all I can focus on. And even before I go into a role, I like to like take a certain amount of time to prep. One of the things that I said was when I'm in a role, unless it's like, the obvious Marvel yeah. or incredible directors or these opportunities that I absolutely cannot pass on. I can't do any auditions. And I had like my very uh, strong lines and I was like, these are my boundaries and yeah. not boundaries, but like, this is something that I'm not willing to uh, compromise on. Yeah. Like I, I will not take <laughs> on other auditions because I take a lot of pride in my work and it's not just like a one, like I will go all out on uh, coaching and uh, costumes and props. And so it's not like just a one day thing or yeah. something that I can bang out on one day to another. I want to make a good impression. I want to do the best job that I can. But while I'm working, I don't feel like I can do that. I don't feel yeah. that I can get the best. And so I don't want to send something in that's just half-assed. And so I said, I, I trust you. And if you ever feel like there's something that I absolutely cannot pass on, I will do the audition. But other than that, I, I, I will not because I can't. They were so more than okay with it. They were like completely like we respect your decision and that's more than fine with us. I'm so grateful for Maria Sofia and this world of comedy. But this level of outrageousness and what it was made sense and my body type 
was a factor in it because it made sense. I had to be the complete opposite of what they were looking for, of a ballerina of this beautiful woman. And so in that sense, 100%, I understood and I was willing to do it. But I don't want to be the butt of a joke. I don't want to yeah. be a, a Maria Sophia. Because also I, I got lucky that I, I got the best of the best material. Yeah. I got like, you know what I mean? I, I got so lucky to work with the most incredible director and the most incredible like Larry and, and these incredible actors and so I was like I, I don't know like I if I'll like ever get anything as good as this again but in the terms of like the specifics that this character required and so I let them know I was like I know you like me because of comedy and I love doing comedy but I won't do comedy at the expense of myself yeah. or things that just don't make sense they they were like oh yeah we we can see you know more for you and I think you know that was important for me for agencies to know that I was like hey I love comedy but I also like drama and I also want to branch out into other things and they they did they saw that for me and that's all I could ask you know what I mean is yeah. to someone to really share your vision that you have for yourself and mm -hmm. I, I remember also saying it over and over in my mind do not get caught up in the fact that they're a big agency if you feel like it doesn't feel right as much as it might hurt walk away because there were other agencies of other tier groups and right and so I said like don't let it sway you because I think it was so hard and I thought yeah you remember what you want and what you're firm on and they just I got lucky that they were everything I could have ever wanted <laughs> oh my god that is incredible so then who have been your like biggest inspirations along the way besides like Jessica's been the biggest she yeah, I mean I remember uh Gina Rodriguez yeah I love her. the virgin yes that's my favorite show that's yes my favorite show ever yeah I remember watching her Golden Globe speech uh -huh. and crying. Uh -huh. And it's so funny. I adopted her motto at one point. <laughs> I can and I will. Yeah. I started saying it in school oh. <laughs> because it was like, you know, the year class and things like that. And people would say it back to me. And it was like, I can and I will. It was just like this beautiful moment. But I remember being so inspired by her. I love her so much. But, oh my God. She's phenomenal. I remember watching America Ferrera, but when I watched her, I was watching her for enjoyment. I don't think at the time I had decided to become an actress yet or, or thought about it. And so now looking back, I have her to thank for pushing us forward. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a huge inspiration to me now. But at the time, I didn't know. But Jessica Marie Garcia was like she did more for me than I could ever put into words watching her and thinking oh my god she looks like me I remember when I saw her on all my blocks that was the first time I had heard of her I quickly ran and I googled her. I was like what the hell I was like oh my god she looks like me oh my god like what is this like she looks like I could also audition for that. And I went and I saw her resume. I saw that she was on Learn Maddie. I got obsessed with it. I was like, oh my God, Disney does. And she changed my perspective on things. Wow. She made me not sell myself short. Yeah. And seeing her do it made me feel like it was possible. Yeah. And all these, she, I cannot tell you just how much she means to me. She's just, oh my gosh. And everything. then now you're on the spinoff of her show if they, oh my god you want to know something yeah. i i remember when we went to go shoot our tiny cameo for the spinoff we were actually there the last day of filming they shot our cameo the last day and so she was there i avoided her the entire i couldn't like how i i just couldn't find it in me to go oh. stay anywhere. i was so nervous and I see her talking to everyone. She's so kind. And every time she's coming, I would run away. Oh. And I would like, wherever she was going, I would, because I was so nervous. Somehow, like, I slipped up. <laughs> and she, we were in the circle, and she was standing next to me. And I remember I completely gave my back to her. And, oh. like, she didn't really didn't notice, like, because we were all, like, kind of like this, right? And, yeah. and I hadn't talked all day. So I, I just, like, 
freaking out and my friends could see me and they were like videotaping me oh. and I was like no please stop 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 I was like freaking out and then finally she just like she's like hi <laughs> like I, I know exactly who you are <laughs> so did you tell her like how much immediately you- started crying oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, I I was sobbing and I just like through the sobbing was telling her how much she meant for me and what she did for me and that to me was like I think also just on my block in general I was obsessed with the show uh-huh. prior to, to any any audition or anything I was obsessed with the show yeah. I loved it which is really it's such a small world because this incredible actor named uh Gilberto Gilberto Ortiz he had a huge recurring role in uh on my blog and he also played my best friend on the growing fangs film that I no shot way. And I remember seeing him like I know who you are yeah <laughs> I was on my block <laughs> yeah but um I loved the show I was a huge fan of the show it was it's so funny and it's so smart and yeah. it just gives so much representation to so many people and but I will say this to any actors I think because I wanted it so badly mm-hmm. I was so afraid of the heartbreak that yeah. would come with not getting it yeah. so I did not allow myself to get excited at any point in the process cuz I didn't want to be disappointed and I just wasn't sure if at the time I could handle that heartbreak yeah. and so I was so negative about it not negative but I was like you didn't get it yeah no I was negative <laughs> that's <Wow>. negative <laughs> I, I kept it's saying I didn't get it I didn't get it I didn't get it I didn't get it and when, when I actually got it because I had told myself for so long that I didn't get it I wasn't able to enjoy it mm. I was just like at that point, I was just ready to feel like I could breathe again in the sense of, like, my career where I was like, oh, my God, I, I don't have to, like, because it was this thing in my gut that, like, wouldn't allow me to enjoy yeah. life <laughs> because yes. I had this huge opportunity I understand. and that if it didn't yeah. go my way, I don't know if I would have been able to handle it. So when I got the call, I was with a friend of mine at the time, and she was so excited. I was My coaches, she was there, one of the... And she was so excited for me. And they were like jumping and screaming. And I just couldn't enjoy it. I I was just like, I can breathe. And so the advice I have is like, please enjoy it. And please enjoy the heartbreak. Because now I I can't get that moment back. And now I wish I would have allowed myself to have felt everything. Even if it was at the cost of me maybe feeling heartbreak later. Just enjoy every step of the process. Because it just makes everything worthwhile and yeah <laughs> yeah so what was that audition process like oh my god <laughs> I feel like I have a story for everything I'm like <laughs> <laughs> it was three scenes very long scenes <laughs> I went in and I did a self-tape and I knew the writing I knew because I loved on my block I knew the tone of it I remember because obviously I'm a fan so it said like new recurring but at the time, they had already announced that this was their last season. So I was like, something's not adding up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> are they lying to people? Like, what's yeah. going on? Because it didn't say spinoff. Yeah. It said possible new series regular. Uh-huh. So it didn't say, like, for that show. And I'm thinking, like, no. Yeah. And so I call it my friend. Because at the time, me and Gilberto, Gil, Ortiz, who, again, done the Growing Pink thing, we were close. This was like what's the tea <laughs> like I was like you you heard something like why does this say possible new series regular but there, this is the last season yeah the word is <laughs> there's a spinoff on the horizon I was like <laughs> oh, I was gagged I was like oh my yeah. god and I did I did the audition and I just was like Man. I couldn't stop thinking about it. It was three yeah. scenes. They were all like different times. And I also felt it. I felt it in my gut that it, yeah. I'd, not that I was going to get it, but that that was a damn good audition. I was like, I I did it. I gave, I had so much soul that it was like, I gave everything that I had for this audition. So if yeah. I don't get it, it's not for me. And I just have to move on. Yep. But I, I remember feeling like I did a great job. Maybe a week goes by and they were like, oh, congrats. You have a callback 
producer session and chemistry read all in one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, literally on the the thing thing on the the Zoom thing it said uh, producer session chemistry read call. <laughs> Oh my god. So, yes, it was uh they added new signs and all these things and I wanted to throw up so <laughs> badly. I it was the nerves ate me alive. It was the longest audition I've ever had, I think. It I think it went on, I'm not lying, for maybe like almost three hours. Just it you was, on the Zoom? Let me tell you. <laughs> let me get into it <laughs> they tell us in the waiting like we're all just our waiting whatever and then they're gonna partner us up because it's yeah. also a chemistry session yeah and there's four of us but they're not only testing my chemistry with the group they're testing my chemistry with my sister and you know other, well, maybe I, am i allowed to say that yeah that's fine <laughs> um but they're testing let's just say multiple chemistry uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> and um you know that in a chemistry session you're hoping because they're piecing people together in groups together that once they let you go you don't get like you most likely didn't get the part yeah because yeah. they they just like phased you out and now they're doing the group so I remember please don't let me go please don't let me yeah. go please don't, yeah. let me go. don't let me go and that was all I could think about I was like if I just make it on to the next group the next group and the next group and I go in the first time and then I'm like okay I feel like I, I did what I had to do yeah. like um, my first scene was a very dramatic scene, and they were loving it. They were, they were being so nice. I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, I can't <laughs> it, but like, just you know, stay focused. <laughs> I didn't want to think about it. And so then they called me in again, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Okay, okay, okay." I did it. I'm like, "Okay, the same thing." Like, relax, relax. And then they call in another girl and another parent. I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> I'm thinking, "No, please." <laughs> And then as we're as I'm going in, after that initial time that I didn't go in, I went in every single time mm-hmm. for every single session. Yeah. And I was like, oh. and I remember as time started to go by, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. They haven't let me go. Oh my God. And then they had like phased out and they had like the the core four that they wanted. We go to the end and they just are telling us they're like, hey guys, we want you to know, like this is a, a under wraps project. And if you do, you know, end up getting the role, like they, they were just giving us advice and stuff, but I made it to the final round of people. And yeah. there was only me of my character. There were multiple people for the other characters. Yes. Not all of them. Just but you, your character. Yeah. For my character, it was just me. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, oh my god, and then you know, I was like, okay, thank you, thank you, and I was like, thank you so much, thank you. And then I closed my mouth, I was like, ah. and then again, I was like, okay, like relax, like relax. At that point, I had a strong feeling that I got the role, but again, you did not allow myself. I was like, don't, don't, don't get excited, don't get your hopes up, don't, nothing, nothing, and um, I think it was like three three days or four days at the end of that week or no I think it was like a couple days after that sorry my manager had called me and she said that I was either gonna get two calls I was gonna get a call letting me know that I booked it or a call to let me know that like they wanted to go into contract negotiations so it's like the network can decide. So it's between me and someone else. And we just have to have our contracts done before we go in. And then the network will approve. But we, you know, and I was like, oh my God, what's it like? Okay, like what is it going to be? What is it going to be? Yeah. And sure enough, the following week, they called me and uh, did all the things. And just a tidbit of information, because I think it's kind of important. I had parted ways with my previous manager and I had just had an agent. But my agent... Um, she's an incredible mother she's an incredible person and she just had a lot going on at the time and she decided to shut down her agency Mm -hmm. and I was left with no agent or manager and I had nothing I had curb on my resume I had Disney on my resume and I just started cold emailing and nobody wanted to represent me I like had friends reach out and um, you know vouch for me to their reps or things like that nobody responded to my emails nobody 
even with this like six episode arc on Kirk, crazy. That's nobody crazy. wanted to do it. The only person who responded to me was the manager I have now, Sherry Kane. Uh, she told she was like, yeah, yeah, I'll meet with her. She came off like uh, my friend recommended me or recommended me to her. And when we got on the Zoom, because I had pitched to her, I had this whole game plan and I was ready to sell myself, you know, like I had this and she started selling herself to me, even though I had reached out to her mm-hmm. and she was like, I think you're great and all this. And she was the only person. And obviously I signed with her. She's incredible. She's I have no idea what I would do without her, but she then on my block was the spinoff was the first audition I had with her mm-hmm. that I ended up looking and I was wow. like, the J team was the first audition that I had when I signed with my managers. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The best feeling. I was like, yeah. oh, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. I was like, yeah. And I will say this, then those people that I was called emailing that like, didn't want to represent me. They came back around. <laughs> very grateful. Very grateful. And I remember specifically, sorry, because I think this is really important. Oh, yeah. I, especially like just for actors to like, to have some time. I remember I drafted out this email to this manager I think that I really wanted and in the email I remember at the end of it like it was very professional but at the end of it I said I'm on the cusp of something really special and I can't explain it to you in words but like things are happening sure enough everything that I said happened and like my career and all these things by the grace of God like started going places yeah and months had passed but you know how sometimes when you type things up on google docs it saves it mm-hmm. like it, it doesn't delete it i went back and i was like just like trying to get rid of the junk uh things that i had in there and i saw that email. i was like what the heck yeah. i was like oh my god oh. I, I was talking on blind faith at that time and it was so cool to see like how things came back around yeah. and i just felt so it was like this gratitude and also this thing of like dang you knew before anything happened and you like I just thought it, it was really awesome and I was like oh, oh my like God. it was really awkward to to read it I like yeah felt like I gave myself a hug and I was yeah. like oh. but oh my gosh when does Free Ridge come out do you know the first quarter of next year okay I think I could I think I, I could say that yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, 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 soon okay. soon we're almost there we're, we're Netflix? yes uh-huh. i know it's so, it's so crazy uh, and like when they they like have the title on on there uh-huh. and they have like the cat they have like our name i'm like oh. i was like mom search it search it mom it's right there. <laughs> that was, been so cool yeah i'm so excited it it was, it's just, it was an incredible experience to film, and I got to work with some incredible actors who I'm now very close with, yeah. and I am so excited for, it was just so much hard work that went into that, and so much love and passion from, you know, our writers, to the showrunners, to the crew, and everyone that was a part of it, it was just so incredible, I'm, I'm so excited for people to see it, and to hopefully, you know, relate to these characters, and maybe are able to do for other people what all my block did for me and so I'm excited and I just it's a literal dream come true I can't believe this is happening oh my goodness I'm so excited for you like just incredible thank you what are you up to these days (laughs) I have something that I cannot believe I get to be a part of I can't, unfortunately. <laughs> you can't share. I can tell you off. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. But I, I literally cannot believe I get to be a part of this. I just, I, I like pinch. I like, yeah. I like, it's insane. I'm, I'm so excited. I definitely have something coming out that okay. I'm so excited about. And uh. I'm excited for people to see <laughs> but oh, okay tell me after but i'm so excited yeah. but i do have a, a movie coming out the estate uh i don't know when <laughs> oh my god this is another actor thing <laughs> sorry this is so cool yeah. i remember like years prior i had a vision board 
Uh-huh. And it was the only time I've actually ever made a vision board. I remember having a list of goals that I wanted. And one of those goals was to work in Hawaii or New Orleans to go and visit those places, but because of work. Yeah. And I remember on there, I had NCIS New Orleans. Uh (laughs) And I had like a thing that was like years ago. And then obviously fast forward later, I got to go to New Orleans and I got to go on Mardi Gras. And then I remember I was, I had to be really careful because COVID and all these things. And I was on my way to like grab food and I had my mask on, but the parades were going on. And I, at the time, my brother was there with me. I got to bring him with me. I started sobbing and I thought this was something that I wanted and that I wished for and that I worked for years ago and I cannot believe that like this goal that I had came true I am in New Orleans and I am working and and like I get to visit and during and I was like in the middle of Mardi Gras like our hotel and it was beautiful and I got to like work with the most incredibly talented people who were so kind to me oh my gosh also <laughs> I just, everyone has been so kind I've been so lucky but the cast on a uh, career enthusiasm were incredible Cheryl Hines I obsessed I love her so much uh-huh. she the show had been going on sorry I know I'm going back but no. the show I just want to talk about people's kindness because it just goes so far. Like that show had been going on for years. They're a huge show and they were a very close knit cast. And I completely understood. And I was going in with the mentality that like, you know, you might be separated from them and they might have their own things. And, you know, you might be over here. And I was like, completely understandable. I get it 100%. They were so kind Mm -hmm. and were just so encouraging and made me feel feel a part of that show they never excluded me from anything they were just so giving and just watching them was also a master class in in I I, fun fact I actually remember being in a scene with Cheryl Hines and being like mesmerized yeah like she flowed like water in the I this is like I this is the best way I can describe her she like flows nothing (laughs) throws her off she like anything you give will like have a current and go back nothing phases her she's an incredibly talented woman oh my gosh also marcus ray i can't tell you how incredibly giving and how much he gifted me and like gave me these nuggets of incredible moments that i just will never be able to repay him for he plays he played my dad uh-huh. in the show and he I remember going to him and telling him like I'm gonna throw up I'm so nervous I'm gonna throw up like I'm gonna throw up right now I think that was the first time I experienced being 100 percent like he, he like he got me like he just had me in every sense of the word and I'm so grateful for him mm. back to the movie so excited <laughs> <laughs> I just like, sometimes I, I don't post a lot on social media. I just get kind of bad at it. I think it seems like I don't say thank you enough or I don't give people credit enough. So when I do something like this, I just want to make sure that if anyone sees it, they just know how much credit other people have for helping me and, and all these things. And I, I'm i just so grateful <laughs> for so many people. But yeah, oh <laughs> I'm excited for the movie. I got to work in New Orleans. Yeah insane there's so much takeaway from your story i'm so inspired like i'm so i'm so inspired <laughs> listening to this thank you so much for doing this i am so glad that we connected on instagram and i can't wait to just watch the rest of your incredible journey thank you that that, that means a lot i really appreciate it this is so much fun i'm so sorry if i rambled no, <laughs> I, no. I have a hard time keeping track of my thoughts but this it was so much fun and I thank you for you know wanting to do this with me it's so weird still to think that like people are interested in what I you know what I did or what happened uh-huh. and so it's I'm just very grateful so thank you so much for wanting to do this oh my God, <laughs> I, appreciate I love it. it that's the theme the theme of this episode is gratitude I love it yes I oh my god 
the last piece of advice. I, <laughs> I will say, whatever you believe in, or you know, is personal to your own. But I will say one thing that I think was a huge factor in my journey and the opportunities that I've gotten up until now is gratitude for everything. Every step of the way, no matter how much I wanted to quit or how much I thought things weren't unfair at the time, I had so much gratitude. And there's other positive feelings, right? And But there's something I think about gratitude that is so strong and yeah. it goes out into the world. And I mean gratitude for like short films, student films, and these things that are at the time maybe feel small like have so much gratitude that you're doing them and always do your best but always have so much gratitude you put that out in the world things will happen and things will find you and gratitude attracts something so strong and I I truly believe that it has made a difference in my career always leading with gratitude <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> No, I love that. Well, on that note, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. And I'm just so excited to see what you do next. Thank you. Thank you so much.